entering the room during the contest. After the contest, please do not leave the room until it is determined that all ballots have been collected. <coughs> Here is the speaking order for the humorous speech contest. Contestant number one, Lay Wang. Contestant number one, Lay Wang. Contestant number two, Stephen Matea. Contestant number two, Stephen Matea. Contestant number three, Yvonne Bailey. Contestant number three, Yvonne Bailey. And our fourth and final contestant in the humorous speech contest this evening will be Septarshi Katwala. Contestant number four, Septarshi Katwala. Contestant number four. Are we ready? Yeah. Yeah. I won't mind 
your friends coming over and love them around. Probably translates to, why? They were here last week. I'm still, I'm still coming up the mess. Hey, honey, would you mind my friends coming over this Saturday? Yeah, I love them around. No problem. Just invite them in. If these friends are family friends, or you know them personally, it's fine. But if these are the ones you met in the bar, you probably need to watch your back for the next day or two. Oh. <laughs> Every woman has two sides. The outside may be elegant, like this Chinese traditional fan. <laughs> but inside, maybe a little different, like this plastic fan. <laughs> so here, I want to give you a quick translation of common girl talk. <laughs> Never mind. You're too stupid to understand. <laughs> something that most of you, if not all of you in this room, have done one time or another. In some cases you've done it yourself, and in other cases you've done it with someone else. 
And I'm proud to say that I am one of you. <laughs> I've done it many times in the past. I'm looking forward to doing it again in the future. In fact, I'm so proud of it that I came here tonight to tell you about one of my personal experiences. Contest judges, fellow Toastmasters, dignitaries, and guests. If you're a homeowner like myself, I know I was looking at some of your faces. You weren't quite sure where I was going with that open. This is Toastmasters. We want to keep it clean. As I was saying, if you're a homeowner, at one point you've done a do-it-yourself job. That you've taken on a task. And I myself can say that I've taken many. And the one that I loathe and can't stand doing but must is plumbing. Plumbing is a nasty job. But it must get done. I'm here tonight to talk about some pipes that I had to replace in a bathroom basement. Now, to do the job right, you got to have the tools, as they always say, right? The right tools? Well, first of all, you're going to need a good pipe wrench. Now, this is an old stand by an old friend of mine. His last year has been very loyal. But for those pipes that are a little stubborn, you've got one that gives you that extra <laughs> And then finally, for those pipes that just won't give up, the ones that get you swearing out words that you make sure your children ain't around and you definitely wouldn't say in church, the pipe will wall, the Terminator! Yes. Now, of course, you're also going to need some plumber's tape, which will help you when you make your connections. And even though you may not use this, I call this adult Play-Doh, plumber's putty. It's a lot of fun. Buy it anyhow, it's a lot of fun to play with. <laughs> and what tool bag would not be complete without duct tape? Yes. Uh, used for everything, even for noisy children. That <laughs> <laughs> morning, fellow Toastmasters and guests, the skies were cloudy. It was drizzly, cold, almost foretelling of what adventure awaited me. I grabbed my tool bag and I went downstairs into the basement. And I could almost swear as I walked towards the utility room with the pipes wrapped, I saw a Dante-like message above the door saying, Abandon hope, all ye who enter. Now I stopped, hesitant, but thinking that my biggest fear was if I were to turn around and go back, my wife would call a plumber and at 80 bucks an hour, that would be something I'd be fearful of seeing. So I pursued it, I continued on, and there in the utility room, in its silence, mocking me, calling out to me, were the pipes. My Moby Dick, as I was Captain Ahab, Jaws to Captain Hooper. I knew my time was limited, so I put down my bag, and I quickly went to the valve to shut off the water. And then I reached in and grabbed my wrench, and as I started to work on the first pipe, one question continued to go through my head at that point in time. That question was, I did shut the water off on the right pipe. <laughs> and lo and behold, suddenly, I started to find out that I had shut the water off. Now, I knew at this point I was taking on water way too much. I had to stop. Was I the end right here? No, Toastmaster. I'm also a Toastmaster. So I grabbed my wrench and guess all odds. I started to tighten that wrench, tighten that couple back in. And unfortunately, the water stopped. Exhausted, I had to reach in my bag for plumbers, helper, number one, the Advil. Oh. <laughs> Taking my Advil, I said, okay, Pikes, you're mine. I'm not giving it this easily. So I went in there, and this time I opened up the right valve and removed the pipes. Now, as I put my piping back together, I knew at this point. Only a novice would think that the worst was behind me. Oh no! My Moby Dick was just in hiding, waiting for me. And that would be when I turned the water back on. So at this point, I decided to stop once again and reach in my bag for plumbers, helper number two. <laughs> started to fall in. All of a sudden, it was suddenly interrupted by the sound of drip, 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 
All of a sudden, I once again had water flowing all over the place. I, had to, I re quickly reached into my pipe and went into the first fitting. And as I tightened that, I looked to my right and there was another fitting. And as another one to my back, I was like a dog chasing his tail. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I lost track of time. I don't know if it was minutes, hours, days. I was like in the twilight zone, going around in circles, tightening one, fitting after the other. When suddenly, just as quick as it started, it stopped. There was no more dripping. Pipes quiet. I ran upstairs to my family like a Roman conqueror to rejoice in my celebration. But would they understand it? No. Instead, they made comments like, well, it's about time you fixed it. Oh. <laughs> well, what took you so long? Or even worse, you did pick up all that water, because otherwise I don't want to slip on it. Dejected. I knew as a do-it-yourselfer, I could not back down. And so I celebrated my own victory. So in closing, fellow Toastmasters, I hope that tonight has encouraged you to take on that do-it-yourselfer. You may find yourself in a pool of water, but will you back down from that challenge? No! <laughs> If you hit on yourself, you hit your thumb more than the nail in the wall, will you stop? No! And finally, if you find yourself digging a backyard patio and encountering insects at even National Geographic cannot identify, will that stop you? No! So go for it! Do it yourself! However, if you find yourself at a chance where you can't take on a task, I have one more tool in my bag here for you to help you out. It's the phone call. Call out that contractor and get your job done. Yvonne Bailey. Be prepared for the unexpected. Be prepared for the unexpected. Yvonne Bailey. Yeah. <laughs> 
the entire time I'm speaking, these little people <laughs> are moving about, and they're spinning, and they're running, and they're screaming and shouting. I told myself they have ears, they can hear me. <laughs> According to the Metcalf study conducted by the University of Texas, we retain 20% of what we hear. So I believe I planted a seed in those little tanks. <laughs> then I was invited to go to Kankakee. Get off the GPS, type in Kankakee. 40 minutes later, you have arrived. <laughs> Before showtime, the promoter says to me, the MC canceled. I said, OK. She said, can you be the MC? The Toastmaster inside of me said, yes. The other voice inside of me said, you've never been an MC before. But you can pretend to be the Toastmaster. And that's what I did. I was the Toastmaster. I must have done a good job because the same promoter called me and said, can you go to Inglewood? Inglewood, yes. Put Inglewood in my GPS. 40 minutes later, you have arrived. The promoter calls me on the phone. I'm in Inglewood. I won't be there. Yeah. However, neither will the MC. Can you fill in again? Oh. You see, that's why you have to be flexible and be prepared for the unexpected. I must have done a good job. The promoter called again. Can you go to Joliet? Yes. Can you be the MC? Yes. <laughs> Joliet into the GPS? I'm on my way. Oh. Now, there's one more thing you need to remember. If you get lost easily, you're using a GPS, turn your music down or you won't hear the directions. That's what happened to me. I got to Joliet and I was, you know, and I missed my turn. Then I panicked. I turned the music down and then I missed the next turn. I'm really panicking because I'm lost. So I'm waiting intently. The GPS is saying rerouting, rerouting. I'm listening, okay, okay, okay. Turn left here. Ding, ding, ding. So I did. I turned left, and bam! I collided with another car. Oh. How could that happen? I sat there for a moment. I'm not injured. I'm OK. I get out of the car. The other driver gets out of her car, and she's yelling. She's pointing. She's making accusations at me. I'm not saying anything. All I know is turn left here, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> talk to me, I tell them, turn left here, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> they give me a ticket for turn left here, ding, ding, ding. They say I made an illegal turn from the right lane of a one-way street. <laughs> I can't believe it. I call my husband, honey, I have to tell you about turn left here, ding, ding, ding. He says, your GPS is a tool. You still have to use common sense and follow the rules of the road. <laughs> there was no sympathy. <laughs> I hung up. That's right. I called the promoter to tell her I don't think I'll make it. Are you sure you can't make it? I said, my bumper is in the middle of the road. My headlight is on the ground. I don't think I'm going to make it. But if I do, I'll call you back. I called my husband back. He said, you're not going to that event. Get your bumper. Get your headlight. Put him in the car. Come home now. Okay, I dash into action, run into the street, pick up the bumper, pop the trunk. It won't fit in the trunk, okay? Stick it in the back seat, slam the door, it's in. Go around to the front of the car, the headlights on the ground, I pick it up, I push it in, it falls out. MacGyver comes to mind. He can fix anything with what he had on hand. What do I have on hand? I go to the back of the car, I pop the trunk, I look inside, I've got nothing. I need some tape. <laughs> okay. What else do I have? My pocketbook strap. It comes off. I take that around. Try to tie that headlight up. It's too short. What else do I have? Computer bag strap. That's it. Grab that. Extend it. Use it like a bra. Put it underneath the headlight. <laughs> it's good. I'm a guy with it. I feel great. I feel like going to that event. Come home now. Okay. I'm still lost. I have to use the GPS to get to the highway. I don't trust her anymore. <laughs> I wish I had a map atlas right now. According to USA Today, many motorists blindly follow their GPSs into all sorts of mishaps. And when the authorities asked them what went wrong, 
They say, turn left here, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> My advice, a full tank of gas, a computer bag strap, a roll of tape, any kind of tape, and a GPS device, but remember, you must use common sense and follow the rules of the road. Recently, I spoke in Bolingbroke. After I finished, a gentleman came up to me. He said, you did a great job. Would you like to be the MC at a hip-hop event in February in Bloomington, Illinois? I've never been an MC at a hip-hop event. But as a Toastmaster, one must always be prepared for the unexpected. Yes. Madam, contest you. Septarshi Katwala. Happy people get better jobs. Happy people get better jobs. Septarshi Katwala. When the economy is down, all the high paying jobs are given to people with great hair. <laughs> the rest of us are forced to scramble for crops. But in the current good economy, there are a higher number of well-paying jobs and a fewer number of witty haired people. <laughs> Toastmaster, esteemed dignitaries, fellow Toastmasters and guests, good evening and welcome. In my opinion, in a good economy, happiness, specifically a good sense of humor, can work to your advantage. A good sense of humor can allow you to rise above the humorless masses and get the high paying job that you originally thought was beyond your reach. A good sense of humor is an absolute must for candidates whose hair offers them extremely <laughs> limited career potential. <laughs> now, when it comes to applying for that high paying job, it needs to be understood that your degree, your experience, your qualifications, etc., have very little to do with the job that you are applying for. Hiring managers are notorious at making bad decisions. Generally speaking, they cannot easily tell the difference between candidates. Chances are very high that the next employer who interviews you is not going to be any smarter at spotting your deficiencies than all your previous employers. <laughs> you can use this to your advantage. <laughs> now, in this context, there is a story of Charles Manson. Uh, Mr. Manson, right now, is serving a term at a penitentiary in California. The FBI has named him a threat to the internal security of our country. The story is that in the late 1970s, Mr. Manson, he got a head shave, he got a tattoo stamped on his forehead, and he walked into a startup company making semiconductor chips in the Silicon Valley Bay Area. He was able to convince the owners and the promoters of the firm 
that he was the right candidate to be his president. Ladies and gentlemen, my point is that hiring managers make a lot of mistakes and all things being equal hair wise, they tend to select the candidate who is the most entertaining. Oh. <laughs> this brings me to the next part of my speech. It is an accepted fact. It is an accepted fact that a high sense of humor is correlated with genius. Why do I say this? Two reasons. The first reason is that I am writing a book on humor. Therefore, I am automatically a genius. <laughs> the second reason is that whenever somebody uses the phrase, it is an accepted fact, everybody assumes that it indeed is so. People do not verify if the statement is factually correct or not. Therefore, whether it's correct or not makes no difference. All that matters is that people think that being funny equals being smart. Now in your corporate world, you will come across two categories of intelligence. The first category of intelligence is the true intelligence, real brain power, if you will. The second category of intelligence is the fake intelligence or false intelligence. This is pretending to be intelligent when you are in fact not intelligent. <laughs> now it needs to be understood that the second category of intelligence, which is fake intelligence, is of a greater value in corporate world than true intelligence. <laughs> so fake intelligence can be a vital asset in your career and can help you get promoted faster. <laughs> Why would that be? I mean, think logically. If you are truly intelligent, you would have the misfortune to understand what goes on, and at the end of your workday, you would be very peevish. <laughs> I mean, water cooler gossips, political agendas, etc. But if you are pretending to be intelligent, the pay is exactly the same <laughs> as if you were truly intelligent, and almost nothing can upset your peace of mind. <laughs> now the safest way to pretend intelligence is through the use of humor. For example, if you decided to exhibit your intelligence by shouting solutions to complex problems, people around you would think that you are a dork. But if you decided to crack jokes all day long, most people would think that you are simply too talented too gifted to participate in any conspicuous <laughs> acts of competence. <laughs> this would allow you to escape all real work for <laughs> This would also have the ad added advantage that you would be able to successfully move from one project to the next project and so on and so forth repeatedly bungling each project <laughs> without anybody ever realizing that the real problem is you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would urge all of you to make more use of humor in your work. <laughs>
contest chair, all of the ballots have been collected. Thank you. Bio. 
metaphysical, so many good things. Yours was metaphysical you had on there, didn't you? That's my gig. Okay. That's my gig. I love all things metaphysical. Awesome. So, awesome. So I'd like to ask you, how did you come to that science and spirituality for the most part? Sure. How did you come to connect the two? That's a really deep question. <laughs> Thank you so much for asking. So um, I actually came to that through my own personal story. I um, had a back problem when I was 15 years old, ended up having surgery on it and suffering for 10 years post-surgery until I discovered the mind-body connection and really the mind-body-spirit connection. And when I discovered that and then discovered the tools to help other people heal themselves, I ended up dedicating my life to it because there was really nothing that I felt more passionate about than helping other people, and that was the most effective way that I could do that. That's excellent. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Let's Stop learning, then you stop earning. Ooh. And 
then you become obsolete. And you know what they do with her. They move you about as if you were furniture that needs to be discarded. <laughs> so you always have to reinvent yourself to be prepared for new adventures. Great. Thank you so much. I'm inspired. <laughs>
the achievement in global health. Thank you once again for coming out this Friday night. On a Friday night, you could have been a lot of other places, but thank you for coming to the Broadview Fire Station to hear the South Division Evaluation and Human Rights Speech concept. I won't belabor the point of why we're all here. I would like for the dis district. Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training to join me up front. The district. And the district Lieutenant Governor of Marketing, Ethel Goltee. Contest. Can we have a quick drum roll? <laughs> Our third place finish, finisher, Mr. Jeremiah Henderson. <laughs> if he's not here yet to leave, we'll make sure that he gets his award. Our second place finisher in the evaluation contest, Aaron Muldoon Stetson. Got it on video. Thank you. 
Just remember, just remember that these proceedings are being videotaped for the en private enjoyment of our contestants and everybody on, and will be available on YouTube. The contest will be posted publicly after the 8th Division contest is ran. I will post private links to any contestant who wishes to see it. The links will be sent to your area, to your division governor. He can provide them for you, or you can email me direct. I have cards here if you're looking to get it. Thank you very much, good sir. Thank you. Thank you.